Hi, Pumpkin. What you doing? You say hi? How's everybody doing? Hey, what's up, gardening friends? Jeff here, Tropical Plant Party. How's everybody doing? I hope you're good. I'm great doing things a little bit differently with today's vlog. Look at that face. She's just so stinking cute. I actually wasn't even planning on uploading a video today, but yeah, hi, Tobes. You have a good nap there, Toby. But, you know, given the state of things going on right now, I thought it wouldn't hurt to pop on, say hi to everybody. Maybe, you know, just hang out for a few minutes and talk about happy, positive things. Because there's, there's definitely a need for that right now. So that's what I'm doing. But I have to do things differently. I have a little bit of a shoulder injury. I don't really want to get into the details on it, which very much breaks my own rule that if you don't want to talk about something on the internet, don't talk about it. But uh, it's kind of going to impact the channel for a little while because it affects how I can edit videos. So, but everything's fine. No well wishes needed or accepted. Send them elsewhere. They're much more needed other places with other people right now for sure. But uh, so that's why I don't, I didn't have a video for today. I have some things I'm working on that will be out later, but it's just, it's slow to edit. It's my right shoulder, I need my right hand to edit, so I can only edit in little tiny intervals, so that's that's what's going on there. Things are, I'm also using a different camera, so hopefully this comes out okay. Oh, you sleepy? You sleepy tuck? Good boy, it's so nice to have you downstairs. You're not upstairs sleeping like you usually are. Look at that beard. Oh, you're so precious. <laughs> good boy, Tuck. Yeah, you good boy. I could probably put that somewhere else now. Couldn't I? Can't believe it's still floating. Plants are doing okay. They could be doing better, but I you know, haven't really been able to do much for like the last week and a half. Just sort of been hanging out, healing and whatnot. So, you know, I'm a little behind with some watering. The tulip, the, tulip, I, I, the tulips don't look great, but um, they were pretty while they lasted. Once those are done flowering in these vases, I've noticed like I need, you gotta get them into soil right away or else this happens, but it's not the end of the world. I can cut them back, refresh them and stick them in some potting mix and they should be okay. So that's not, like I said, it's not a bit. What, uh, what's going on outside? Oh, well, I was gonna say let's go outside, but it's oh, <laughs> there's a window there, and I just bopped my camera right into it. Uh, it's raining. I can't take this camera outside in the rain. But I did take some of the palm trees out. You can see they still have some old foliage, starting to die off. It's ready to be cut off. But those have been out for a while. They were in the driveway pretty much all winter. I moved them in when temperatures dropped below like 20 ish depending on the palm tree the windmill palms they're much more sturdy so i don't have to do that with those but the uh, bigger ones right here and there's another one back there those are the mule palms and the mule palms they're not quite as cold hardy but they're pretty freaking tough i've had them outside almost all winter here in zone six it was an extremely mild winter though they're good out here for the rest of the year though so i went ahead and moved them to the patio mostly to create a bit of a screen because there's construction going on at my neighbor's house they put up this really pretty brick wall it used to be um railroad ties but there, there were it was just like a constant line of people walking around uh, behind the fence there it was just a little awkward so that's multi-purpose that's why they're just sitting in the middle of the patio and not like spaced out or placed out and then i have some potting things going on out there some perennials that hopefully will start shooting up quickly so it looks like a mess but it's really it's just plants that are waiting to hopefully come up soon because it's definitely it's getting nice enough outside that there should be some activity pretty quickly i would hope i really want to get this magnolia potted up but uh, that's going to be a big project i can't do that right now not with the shoulder situation the teddy bear magnolia that's sitting out here pardon the bad angles and everything i'm just trying to get we're, we're just working through this together this isn't meant to be a nice formal video but uh, this teddy bear magnolia, which I had in a video, I don't know, last fall, it um, it's doing much better than I expected it to. It's supposed to be a less hardy variety, hardy to zone 7, this is zone 6, and then this is the Bracken's Brown Beauty, which is supposed to be fully hardy in zone 6, and uh, yeah, you can see even from here that there's definitely a difference between the two. The Brackens, though, is a little bit more exposed, and it uh, was in need of a repot last fall, but that's not the time to do a repot on really anything, especially a perennial that you're keeping outside. So it's a little thin and bare, but it actually has more cold damage than the teddy bear does. 
I don't know. I thought that was interesting. But you know, even the teddy bear, it's only like they're maybe a foot apart from each other. But being up against the house does make a pretty big difference as far as its cold hardiness. Remember that basil I cut out in a vlog a while ago? I stuck that in this jar and been keeping it in the kitchen. And it's still growing and flowering, even though it's just in a teeny tiny bit of water. And uh, it's rooting very, very, very well. That is the amazel basil. I mean, most basil is pretty sturdy, but this stuff, it's almost like you can't kill it, which is fantastic. Not that I've tried, but I mean, Come on now. Look at that. It's only been in here for like a week and a half, maybe. And it's still, the fact, it's the thing that it's still flowering. That's what I'm like, really? What is going to stop you from being so prolific and fantastic? Being cut from your plant. I didn't put any nutrients in that water. The sun through this window is like, eh, it's okay. It's not fantastic. And the more that this magnolia here starts to flush out, it's got lots of buds on it but i don't think any have opened yet maybe one or two have i don't know if they will this magnolia here tends to bud out before the frost comes around like it'll warm up for a few weeks and it'll bud and then a frost comes and knocks the flowers out so uh, that would be nice if you get to see some flowers on it this year like the full tree usually you get to see some and then they get damaged by frost but it's been, I'd say, a good four or five years since I've seen the entire tree covered with flowers. And it would be, I don't know, I hope it, that it goes okay, but it's supposed to be like 33 in a couple days. So fingers crossed, hopefully we'll get to see that in its full glory. And when it does, I'll, we'll go outside <laughs> when it actually does bloom, because this is not ideal at all. Not one bit. <laughs> really? Really? You act like you've never seen the camera before? Come on now. Calm yourself down. Calm down. Oh my goodness, Cosmo. Let's see what's going on with the plants. I mean, I know what's going on with the plants, but you guys don't because it has been a hot minute since we've been out here. Uh, they look good though. Everything's doing well. I did hang up some sticky traps because the one mosquitoes were getting pretty bad out here. I'll go ahead and turn the fan off so that that's not hopefully too obnoxious. Uh, the mosquitoes were getting kind of bad and then uh, there's a little bit of white fly i've noticed it's that time of year when the bugs just kind of start going nuts out here so the sticky traps i can see you can see there's gnats on there there was a mosquito last night where did it go where'd the mosquito go huh that's weird well anyways the it's got lots of the yeah, you get it it's catching the critters so i hung a few of those up just up to control their populations a little bit i need to fertilize this water lily don't i it's been like two months i since it's the water's cooler that's not something i've really been concerned with doing but i think i should probably get on that if i'd like for it to be flowering this spring or even just early summer they really they're heavy feeders so that's something they would appreciate i don't know is there anything new mm, i don't think so i did i got some more stuff hung up back here but i don't know how well you're gonna be able to show it to you because I'm blocked. I got a bromeliad hung up from the pole back there. I have another two bromeliads that I need to get into baskets and get them hung because they have outgrown their pots and they've, excuse me, hello, they've gotten kind of wonky and they just fall right over. So those need to go up into baskets. Plastic has basically just given up at this point. That's actually because I had someone helping me out here and they knocked the ladder over and it tore it down even further so that's just, people are always like you need more help well when i get help they mess everything up and make my life a lot harder so let me just do things my way the poblano look at <laughs> okay i need to get some steaks for that don't i let me find some steaks here we go as i was saying the poblano usually i wait till the end of the video for the poblano updates but this isn't going to be a long one anyways though because I, I can't edit a long video and the, it's saturday it's the day this video comes out this was a last minute decision to get a video out for today it's doing very very well remember a few weeks ago i put these onto some wicking cord it might have been the last vlog i don't know to be honest last couple weeks are kind of blurry for me there's just a lot going on which i'm sure everybody can you know is in the same boat there but it had flowers before and now it has lots and lots and lots of little peppers on it and they're doing very well too so well that the whole thing's falling over so i had put this and the amazel basil on some wicking cord and guys i haven't watered them since not one time. They're, it's going wonderfully. They are doing fantastic. Uh, but there's also a confound here. I also haven't had to water the Persian shield. I've had to water everything else over here, but 
but the Persian shield usually needs to be watered like every couple of days or so. And, uh, well, actually, it's gotten a couple splashes, but I don't think, I didn't put this on a cord. No, I didn't put that on a cord. So uh, the temperatures have also been a little bit cooler out here because I haven't really had the ability to tend to things very heavily the way things are going right now. So I dropped the temperature on my heaters down so that the plants would just kind of chill out and not need as much attention. So yes, the uh, wicking cord is working well. I haven't had to water much, but the conditions have also changed somewhat too, right? So I can't attribute too much to them with the temperatures being lower. That little piece of basil I stuck in here in that video though, it's taken route no shock there though you've seen how easily basil rooted just a minute ago so that's fun and exciting i do need to hit things over here with an insecticidal soap i might just actually go with de powder for right now but i've been noticing what looks to be like maybe some slight aphid activity and trying to stay on top of that like i said this time of year like late february into march and then march into april the bugs just go nuts so i have to stay on top of things with the de powders and the uh, insecticide the horticultural soaps and oils and whatnot makes a really big difference as long as it gets done on a regular basis if i miss a week then it just it destroys everything and it makes things much 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 more complicated and then here are those sticky traps if anyone was wondering here's the front of that package i just got them off amazon uh, i liked these because they said they were safe essentially so like if water hits them and runs off that it's not going to hurt the other animals i'm still being careful with the water it makes me nervous i have really conflicting emotions when it comes to sticky traps i think that they're just like really really cruel like kind of the meanest way to kill something but uh, it was just kind of a necessary evil with the white flies and whatnot going on out here. So it, it's the direction I decided to go. So I'm, I'm being a hypocrite. It, it is what it is. I'm sorry. What I liked about these was that they gave information on here. Where is it? I should have found that before I started talking about it. In the directions here, I don't know how well you'll be able to see it, but it says for fungus gnats under the gross, grower's tip to control them, place horizontally face up across the rim of the container grown plants to uh-huh or directly on the surface of the soil really okay that makes sense but it says beneficial insects are not attracted that doesn't mean that they won't come in contact with it though so for now i'm just going to leave them floating up there for the flying insects the fungus gnats aren't terrible i've been doing the peroxide flushes and that seems to help a lot i also got these little like sticky ones that you can stick actually down into the soil I don't know if I'm going to use them or not, but I thought I'd get them just to try. And then I have like an actual, it's an orange stick that you put a liquid in that I'm waiting to come in the mail. Uh, that's supposed to be really great for fungus gnats, but I mean, I don't know. I've used the DE powder, the mosquito bit things. I've, maybe I got a bad batch. I talked about that a lot in last year's summertime vlogs when I was using those. They weren't doing anything. Like I was putting up to eight times the amount that you needed to into my water containers where my water lilies and things were and the mosquito larvae were just totally unaffected by it so maybe i had a bad batch i don't know but it didn't do anything for fungus gnats or for mosquitoes so that just is what that is so the de powder and peroxide flushes have been the best for me so far but like the peroxide flushes with this many plants it's extremely time consuming and i have to do it with a watering can so i can't even really do those right now so uh that's why i'm so that's why i'm using sticky traps right now just help control the population a little bit uh, another plant update the tree fern I i'm ready to give this thing the boot this plant is such a diva which i knew it would be when i got it by give it the boot i mean just move it outside not like i'm not going to kill it that i think that would be kind of extreme but it is shading everything as it's growing which is great that it's growing but it also this plant requires watering pretty much daily because the soil that it's in just drains so 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 quickly uh, i know this is a bad angle because there's a monstera in front of it but there's the tree for it's everywhere back there and uh, if i miss a day then uh, it just browns up and it's like i'm gonna die just from one day it's not that bad outdoors but when it's inside 
Oh my gosh. It's just, it's been a headache to take care of. And I don't mind watering a plant every day. That really doesn't bother me very much. It's that it is just an insect magnet. Every mealybug, every everything flocks to this tree fern. So I'm ready to just not even have it in here because it's so wide that I can't even really spray it because even the safest sprays, I don't want them to potentially run off into the water. So uh, it's it's just been, it's been a pain in the butt. It's not worth it to me. It needs to go outdoors. And I've been, what is the forecast? Could I do that? I probably shouldn't do it, but could I? What's my phone say? Eh, I don't know, 34 tonight. And then there's a low of 32 coming up next Saturday. Kind of risky. I could keep it someplace where I could just scoot it in and out of the garage on those cold nights. I mean, I did that with the palm trees all winter and it was okay. And I'm not going to lie. If it, if the cold defoliates it, I don't, I don't really care, but I wouldn't want the entire plant to die. Uh, I'm thinking about it. It's going to be hard to get out of here and I'm not supposed to be lifting and moving things, but I'm also losing my mind just sitting around and not being able to do fun planting gardening activities hmm yep i couldn't take it anymore i had to what oh no this is why i don't ask people for help it broke my cactus what's done is done you, you can see here i mean it's this thing it's covered covered amelia bugs look at that they're terrible. They love this tree fern, which is nice for keeping them off of the other plants. But um, it's just so hard. I can't control them when this plant was in there. I couldn't stay on top of spraying it and everything. So now that I have it out here, I can clean it up a little bit. I might put some stakes. Let me do it. I'm going to put some stakes on here. The plan here was to stake it up so that it's not taking up such a wide space. And then I've sprayed it down with an insecticidal soap. And uh, now I'm going to put a bag over it. A clear bag. I don't know if I have one that's big enough. This is quite tall when it's all put up like that, but let's see. I think that'll help hold the chemical in. Okay, <laughs> that'll do. Bag wasn't quite big enough, but like I said, it's fine for now. The point of the bag isn't for biosecurity. It's to help hold in the moisture from that horticultural soap that I just used. Uh, it's uh, I just used the bonite tomato and vegetable. It has pyrethrin in it, which as long as you spray the mealybugs heavily, should take care of them. But yeah, like I said, this is just to keep that active a little bit longer so as they move around then they'll be more exposed to the product and um, hopefully get it on them because uh, otherwise this stuff dries so quickly and I cut all the other stuff off let me show you here's the bad stuff that I cut off of it yeah lots and lots of bugs not good but it was good with these branches to just get them off there to just cut them off this is why I keep them on the plant there's no reason to the foliage is already going downhill and it's a fern so it'll grow quickly I could have cut another bag to bring this all the way down but like I said this thing needs to be watered like all the time so I don't really want to have to lift up plastic or mess with it too much so this should that should do the trick I don't know we'll see and look at all the light that can come through here now. I did, it was a very pretty plant, still is, I didn't kill it, but you, like some of the plants just weren't thrilled about having that above them and shading them. And since it had become a nuisance, a pain in my bite, it just made sense to go ahead and get it out of here. And it wasn't as difficult to do as I thought it was going to be. So I'm glad to have that done. Oh, and I should probably finish out the thoughts with the plastic on that fern. I'll leave that on there for maybe three or four days. I've put the, done that with plants before and like left them in those bags for weeks at a time and just popped them open to water and closed them back up because with them being translucent, as long as it's not a plant that requires a lot of like constant sunlight, then it does okay in there. Uh, but uh, that's not the case with the tree fern. I don't think that'll do great if it's enclosed like that for too long because they like a decent amount of airflow. So it'll just be for a few days and I'll move it outside and bring it back in when the temperatures look like they're going to be frosty. Even though the Australian tree ferns can take some frost, it's like, eh, why risk it? Although some frost would take care of those mealy, but no. That's not necessary. It's close enough to that time of year when it could go outside safely, so why do any damage to it right now? Anyways, so I'm gonna wrap this up. I know it was a weird video, an awkward video, but uh, like I said in the beginning of the video, there's just not a lot I can do right now. I probably shouldn't even have done that, but it was okay. I just made, I like the rules, I'm not supposed to lift my arm above a certain level, and I just kind of like waddled over to the plant on the table and just kind of scoot it off the table and scoot around with my foot. It was fine. Um, again, I'm fine. No well wishes needed or wanted. Save them for other people. There are so many more who need them right now. 
Uh, it's just a mild discomfort and the editing is a little bit tricky right now because I need my arm So that's what's going on there. It'll get better over time So things are gonna be a little bit different on the channel for the next several weeks, but um, that's not a big deal I just it, it's because I had been planning on doing like lots of yard work and whatnot And now I'm not going to be doing that at least not in the same capacity but I don't know, we'll figure it out. You know, with everything that's going on right now, I think it would be nice to just be able to upload. We can relax, hang out, look at plants, maybe talk about some things, and um, it's t things need to be a little bit less serious, right? That's what I'm here for. That's the way I feel about my channel. I just want to keep things light. Maybe a you know several minute escape, or who knows how long the videos will be, but just something to we can all get our minds off of the bad and take a little mental break for a little while which is what's great about gardening and plants right is they give us the opportunity to be able to do that it's one of the things we can go outside and do and um, maintain our social distancing and whatnot to stay safe and keep other people safe and still get to get a little bit of exercise some sun and overall improvements to our mental health and clarity and just lots of good things right so that's my plan for right now like i said we just we're well, gonna take it easy and hang out together and just be plant nerds which is essentially what i've always done you guys didn't know i had the plans so i didn't really need to clarify any of that but i did so there you go oh, this poor heliconia it hasn't been getting the light that it needs for the last few weeks since that fern flushed out that's going to be a lot happier right now. I'm gonna make sure to get that dead stuff cut off there. Don't wanna leave it on the plant for too long. Uh, it, before I do go though, I do. I wanted to say thank you to the people who reached out to check on me because it was odd that I didn't upload a video last Saturday. Uh, I'm sorry, I, I didn't say anything. So I, really, I don't think anybody would care or notice. And uh, um, so my apologies if I'm anybody worry. And again, thank you for checking in. Everything's okay. Everything's just fine. Things could be so much worse. I'm not gonna get hung up on what's going on with me right now. It's not a big deal. But in light of what's going on, uh, you know, let's all just remember to be loving and be as kind as possible to each other as positive and as uplifting this is definitely not the time for trolling and nonsense you just need to brush that stuff off I don't know what's going on with those people maybe they had a bad day who knows their circumstances uh, I'm just here for a good time and that's a point that I think is the most important to make right now for us all to keep reminding each other to just you know spread that love and as much positivity and warmth as we can because without it, we're all screwed, right? It's the least we can do. It's so simple and easy to just be nice. Who knows what the future holds right now? Everybody's kind of in that anxious place and thinking the same thing. But what I know is I'm going to make sure to do my part and hopefully get a few videos out a week so we can all take a little mental break of just nothingness and stupidity that sounds like fun to me that's what i get on the internet for not for nonsense it's for randomness well and of course information and education that's one of the fun things about the internet you just get on you have a question you can google anything don't you just love that okay i said i was gonna go i'm gonna go i hope everybody's doing well uh especially right now i really hope everybody's doing well and that things are okay for everyone i'll just need to remember to keep our chins up and hopefully you put love out there and it'll come back to you it seemed naive but a pretty simple thing to give a try doesn't hurt right oh my gosh it's two o'clock i gotta go i still have to get this video edited and up hopefully like within the next few hours <laughs> like i said hope everybody's doing well try and stay positive and uh, safe that's the most important thing all the social media down there the like subscribe i don't, I don't even care it's there on the screen you know what to do of course as always and most importantly everybody keep on growing bye bye